Welcome back everyone to the eCore Academy eLearning platform. Today my name is AJ Raj, back with a geometry video for you all today. Today's lesson topic is all about extended problems with in reference to our dilations topic. And this is building off of our previous video that I made on geometry in geometry called dilations. It goes through the basics in that previous video all about dilations, um, their transformation, transformational properties, and how they're actually existent on blank transformations. But today is going to be a bit of a higher level application with relationships of dilations and much more complex relationships and problem scenarios. So before we get into jump into today's lesson, please make sure to smash that subscribe button down below, hit that like button on this video, as well as smashing that post notification bell to get notified on any of our channel's latest posts at eCore Academy. And it's all very much greatly appreciated. So like I was saying, today's problem is just going to be extended problems off, off of our dilations topic uh, t uh, lesson video, which has already been made, and it's a previous video to this one. I will link that video down in the description below if uh, you guys haven't already visited that one, but I do recommend that you view that one before you view this one, um, because today's lesson topic is all about the higher level, like I said, the higher level relationships and problem scenarios relating to dilations, and this is completely aside from the topics, uh, from the basics, sorry. But the topic is going to be um, a bit of a higher level concept, but I will try my very best to try and relate to these fundamentals, um, although you are already expected to know that coming into this lesson. So today's lessons, um, the whole purpose of today's lesson is to discover um, and see what are the coordinate properties and applications of dilations. So we're gonna look at the coordinate plane as I referred to here. We're gonna be looking at some coordinate plane scenarios and its applications in, coordinate, in the coordinate plane and some other uh, general planes as well. So let's jump right into it. Before we jump into the um, basically the purpose of today's lesson, the higher level ratio, uh, higher level concepts and um, problem scenarios with coordinate planes, let's just like take a quick look at um, dilations and their basic fundamentals. So this is a bit of a dilations recap. So a dilation by geometric definition is a transformation in which changes the size, but not the shape of a figure. So it's not a rigid motion. If you refer to my transformation videos and my dilation video, I go through exactly what this is and I break apart the definition of a dilation. But just to give you a little recap right here, um, a dilation is basically a type of transformation. A transformation is a one-to-one -one mapping of a figure that basically alters that figure in some manner um, in which changes the size of a figure. So it will change the size of a figure, whether or not that's on a blank plane or or it could be on a coordinate plane, but it will not change the shape of the figure, meaning it maintains all of its angle relationships. Um, and what that means, I'm just going to write this down here, um, just um, changes size. And if you should already know that if it changes the size, it's going to either be an expansion or a contraction. And the contraction and expansions are going to be making it larger. The expansion makes it a figure larger in a dilation process as a contraction actually shrinks that figure in the same um, plausible manner. So it changes the size and also keeps the angle measures. So that's, that's the main aspect, one of the main aspects of dilation. So it keeps angle measures and it maintains um, figure similarity which also insinuates that you will have proportional side lengths. All right, so that's the definition of a dilation. And what are the necessary components to actually carry out a dilation? So the necessary components of a dilation conduction is actually going to include the scale factor and the center of dilation. If you don't already know what those are, the scale factor is basically um, the increment in which you're increasing the actual pre-image to the image or the original figure to your dilated figure. And the center of dilation is the point in which you are conducting that, meaning you're going to be using that. It's a relative point, the center of dilation, not necessarily a central point, um, but it's referred to as a um, relative point rather than a central point, but it is con considered the center of dilation. So let's look at coordinate representation and let's look at the process in specific. So the center of dilation, like I said before, um, can be a single point on the coordinate plane as well as the origin itself. Now keep in mind the center of rota uh, dilation is a relative point in which is calculated, used to calculate, you know, the actual dilation itself. And I explained that in my previous video. Um, so please refer back to that if you don't understand what I'm saying here. So the center of dilation is a single point on the coordinate plane, um, which means any point on the coordinate plane, or it can be as specific as the origin itself. And the origin is going to probably be your most common point. So I'll just write that down here. So origin is going to be most common.
All right, so the, um, yeah. And then your scale factor is what can be applied by figuring out the location of the center of dilation and the endpoints of the figure. So the center of dilation is already going to be given to you in a, in a certain problem. You cannot calculate that on your own because it is relative to whatever the person's trying to um, relate to you through the problem. However, a scale factor can always be calculated after you're given a figure. Um, and if you're given a figure and its um, image, or if it's already uh, expressed to you in a problem. Because right now we're trying to focus specifically on problem structure. That's why I made this specific video, because dilations can be a bit confusing. That's why I separated this video out. So your scale factor can be applied um, after you figure out the center of dilation, and you're actually calculating the endpoints of the figure. So once you've actually uh, digressed to a certain point, um, then you can actually conduct your dilation smoothly on the coordinate plane. So we're going to look at coordinate representation, part one, and this is all about coordinate rules. So if you don't know what I mean by coordinate rules, if you haven't seen my transformations video, I actually refer to coordinate rules quite a lot. And coordinate rules are just specific scenarios in which you can use shortcuts through relations with coordinates. Um, and these aren't always going to be accurate and represented for all kinds of dilations, but it is only for specific types of dilations, and I will clarify that right now. So in order to conduct a dilation with the center of dilation at the origin, so I just want to highlight that real quick. It's very important that you see this. So the center of rotation, uh, center of dilation, is at the origin. So that means nowhere else but the origin. You can use this coordinate rule only if it is so. Only if a figure has a dilate uh, a center of dilation at the origin, which is a point zero zero on a coordinate plane. Because remember, we're referring to everything in terms of the coordinate plane. If it's zero zero on the coordinate plane, um, then it will then this rule here will apply for it. So the, the rule that I'm going to show you is um, the fact that the if you're given an original coordinate, uh, remember how I said you need um, coordinates of a figure to actually conduct transformations and in specific dilations, you do not need the side links because after you're given the points, you can then merely connect the points together to develop your segments of your figure. So once you're given a single point, meaning one point out of the entire figure on the dilation factor, you're going to be taking that original XY coordinate right here, and then you're going to be using this transformation, which is representative of the dilation. This maps to xy maps to x times t, um, comma y times t. So that basically means that t is a scale factor. And all you're doing is you're taking each coordinate, which includes the x coordinate, and of course, the y coordinate. And you're going to multiply them both by the value of t, which is a scale factor. So I'm going to say that multiply by scale factor and multiply by scale factor. And once you do that, you get the point of the new figure of the image that you're trying to create. So once you've applied that, you're going to get the point and uh, coordinate of your new figure. And you're going to do that as many times as for as many vertices that you have of your figure. And then you'll be able to conduct um, a dilation. Um, specifically with its center of dilation at the origin, and discover your image. And this is coordinate represent representation part two. So that was a specific coordinate rule for only having one scenario, but this is representative for all other possible scenarios for dilations. And of course, you can still use this for um, whether your center of dilation is at the origin, but it's much more efficient to, do, to use the coordinate rule that I had previously shown you. So let's look at other scenarios in the representations. So if a figure, sorry, if a figure that is undergoing a dilation does not have a center of dilation at the origin, then it could follow this rule. So what it's what I'm basically saying here is if a figure um, that's undergoing a dilation process that um, does not have its center at zero, zero, and it has a center of dilation at any point other than the origin, which is zero, zero, then it can follow this rule. So um, this is a paragraph form of my rule because it's easiest to convey in this way, but I suggest that you write this down um, because it's very important. But basically what you can do is you can take each point on the original figure that you're given, what the figure that you're trying to dilate, and you can calculate its distance from the center. So you're going to take each point, which is a coordinate on the plane, and you're going to calculate its distance from the center, center of dilation. Then take that distance that you gain after calculating that um, vertical distance and uh, horizontal distance or just the horizontal distance entirely, and you're going to multiply it by the scale factor to get the new point. So I'm going to show you a little um, example here. So if you're given a center of dilation right here, and if you're given a single point right here, and say, for example, we're given that scale factor is going to be 2. So I'll say factor equals 2. 
Um, what you're going to do is you're going to look at your point here. I'm going to label this point A, and I'm going to label this CD, which stands for center of dilation. And after you see um, point A, you're going to try and calculate this distance from CD. So one way that you can do that on a coordinate plane, the main way that you can do that is you can calculate the distance that you're going across and then the distance that you're going up, and each of those are going to be separate calculations. So say, for example, you're going across three units and going up two units. Um, what you would do is you would multiply each of those values by two, um, so say, for example, um, do you take three as your horizontal distance, you'd multiply three by two to get that your um, new point, point B, would have to be six units horizontally across um, from this point center of dilation. And then you'd multiply two by times the two for the uh, vertical distance to get that your new vertical distance of your dilated point would have to be four units vertically distant from the center of dilation. So that'd be one, two, three. And four. So that's how this whole process works. And you can use that for each separate point, you know, to get a full figure. So as many points as you need to get your figure, say, for example, a rectangle, you'd still use the same process for all of those points. Now we're going to go into these practice problems. So I have three practice problems made for you, and they have each of them representing three different scenarios that you can possibly given on the coordinate plane. So let's practice with coordinates. This is our part one. So this is graphing dilations, and this is our problem number one. Um, and the problem is you're going to graph the image of this figure after a dilation of two with their center at the origin. So we're going to conduct a dilation, of course. And this dilation is going to have a center at the origin. So let's just write that down here. CD, center of dilation at the origin. So 0, 0. And its scale factor is going to equal 2 because it's a dilation of 2. So like I said before, what you can do with this is you can use the coordinate rule in which I said you can multiply since this, well, specifically, since this is a transfer a dilation with a center at 0, 0, or the origin, um, you can actually use the coordinate rule that I had showed you before, which is you're going to multiply each and every um, coordinate by the scale factor. So it's going to x times d, comma y times d. So we're going to substitute those values for the given coordinates. So let's start off with the first coordinate, um, coordinate a. And that's 2 comma 1, as you can see here, that's 2, I'm sorry, that's 2 comma 3 here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 2, multiply it by 3, um, and take the y, a y coordinate, which is 4, and also multiply it by, sorry, um, it's supposed to be 2, I apologize. The scale factor is 2, not 3. So you're going to multiply each um, coordinate by 2 to get your new coordinate as 4, comma, 8. For your next coordinate, for uh, point B, you're going to take 1, comma, 4. That represents B. And what you're going to do is, oh, sorry, my bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, this uh, y value is not supposed to be 4, actually. This y value is going to be 3. I apologize again. It's been a long day. <laughs> so this y value is going to be 3, and then you're going to multiply 3 by 2 to get 6. So your new coordinate for point A uh, a prime will actually be 4, 6. Sorry for the confusion. So our second coordinate is going to be point B, and we're going to take 1, 4, our original coordinate, and we're going to undergo this dilation process. So we're going to take our x coordinate 1, and we're going to multiply it by 2, our scale factor, and then take our y coordinate 4 and multiply that by 2 to get our new coordinate of 2, 8. And finally, we're going to take our third coordinate, uh, point C, and we're going to take the x coordinate multiply by 2 and take the y coordinate and multiply it by 2 which is 4 and 5 to get our new which is 4 comma 5 our original coordinate and we're going to multiply each uh, coordinate by 2 to get our new final product of 8 comma 10. So let's graph that like I said here we're going to graph this first so we're going to look at 4 comma 6 um, and we're going to graph that right here so that point is right here 4 comma 6 and that'll be a prime. And then we're going to take the second point, 2, 8, and graph that. It's right over here. And we're going to take our final point, 8, 10, and we're going to graph that. So um, 10 is not in included here, so let's estimate that this figure is going to be 8, 10 over here. So I'll just indicate that here, 8, 10. And that's going to be our c prime. So let's just connect those dots here. And that is our dilated figure. So 
So let's move on to our second problem that we're going to be incorporating today with our practice with coordinates and dilations. And um, it's all about graphing dilations. This is, this is going to be our problem two, which is going to be a different scenario and type of problem. And the problem is we're going to graph the dilation of this figure under a dilation of negative 0.5 with its center at the origin. So this is a bit of a different problem because we're actually going to be incorporating a different kind of scale factor since this is a negative scale factor. Because as you can see in my previous problem, I had incorporated a positive scale factor, which is going to be your most common type of scale factor. But with a negative scale factor, you have a bit of a different property that comes along with it. Um, so we're going to use, we're still going to remain um, using our original um, dilation tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to dilate this figure on, under a negative uh, dilation. And what that does is it actually flips the figure across its um, center of dilation, meaning it'll be located on the opposite side with half the distance from each point uh, in relation to the dilation. Uh, sorry, the center of dilation. So let's get started. So let's uh, first draw out our um, dilation rule here with the center of dilation being at the origin. We can have our coordinate rules represented. So that would be 0 comma 0. So we'll use our coordinate rules. So we'll do x times t comma y times t since it's still at the center of at the origin. So let's, um, t being the scale factor, so let's actually calculate those coordinates. So let's see, um, our first coordinate, let's look at uh, coordinate w, which is negative 7 comma 2. So let's take negative 7, multiply it by 0. 0.5, negative 0. 0.5, sorry. Let's erase that. So negative 0. 0.5. and then the y value, which is two, and we're gonna multiply that by negative 0.5 as well. So we're just gonna repeat this process for each and every coordinate. So um, once, and we're gonna calculate that, so negative seven times negative 0.5 is actually going to be 3.5, and two times negative 0.5, which is just 0.5 times, uh, which is taking the half of one and multiplying it by its negative, is going to be negative one. For our second coordinate, we have coordinate, uh, point V, which is negative 2, comma 2. So let's apply the same process. Going to multiply it by the uh, scale factor, the each coordinate. And then we're going to simplify here as well. Uh, negative 2 times negative 0. 0.5. The negatives cancel out, and 0. 0.5 of 2 is going to be 1. And then 2 times negative 0. 0.5 is the same value here, and it's going to be negative 1. Um, for our third coordinate, we have point U, which is negative 2, comma 5. So let's apply the same process. So negative 2 times negative 0. 0.5 and 5 times negative 0. 0.5. And we get that our new coordinates are negative 2 times negative 0. 0.5 is going to be 1. And 5 times negative 0.5 is going to be negative 2.5. And for our last um, last step, sorry if I'm cramming this in here, um, we're going to do point T, which is negative 5, comma 5. And we're going to apply the same process, so negative 5 times negative 0.5, comma, are, so we have negative 5 times negative 0.5, as well as 5 times negative 0.5. And our answer is going to be, 2.5 comma negative 2.5. And all we have left to do is just graph that. So 3.5 comma negative one, that's approximately here. And I just wanna indicate here that this is our center of dilation, zero comma zero. So this is our first point here. Um, then we're gonna mark one comma negative one right here. And then we have one comma negative 2.5 right down here. And finally we have 2.5 comma negative 2.5. So 2.5 comma negative 2.5. And that's right there. So we can just draw those segments in to graph our new dilated figure. And as you can see, it's approximately one half of this figure here, UT WV, this parallelogram, right par parallel, right trapezoid, and it's on the opposite side of the center of dilation, which is at the origin. 
And finally, with our final problem, we're going to practice with dilations. It's going to be a different problem. This time, we're going to have a different type of center of dilation, which is going to be apart from the origin. So we're going to graph the dilation of this finger under a dilation of 0.5 with its center at 6, 3. So remember how I said we're going to calculate the distance um, from um, each point from the actual center. Um, the actual center of dilation, and then we're just going to multiply that by the scale factor. So we're going to start with point C over here. Uh, point C is going to actually be our center of dilation since it's at 6, 3, so I'm going to mark that off. Since it's our center of dilation, we're going to calculate the distance that 6, 3 is from 6, 3, and we can see that the distance from 6, 3, whoa, sorry about that. Be a bit neater here, so 6, 3. The distance from 6, 3 to 6, 3 equals 0. So that means the new figure will have a distance of 0. So that means this point here, 6, 3, is going to remain as one point of our new dilated figure. Um, next thing that we're going to do uh, is we're going to, um, we don't need to multiply it by our scale factor because 0.5 times 0 is just going to equal 0.5. So I'll just put that here. 0.5 times 0 is just going to equal 0, so that's why that's why we're going to remain the point, at, leave the point at 6, 3. For our next point, we have 2, 3, and what we're going to do is we're going to calculate its distance from C, uh, C, which is actually going to be representative of the center of dilation, and the distance is actually a vertical, it's a, only a horizontal distance, so we're calculating from 6 to 2, so 6 minus 2 is going to be 4, so the distance um, between C and A, so that's uh, distance is going to be from 2 comma 3 and 6 comma 3 and that's just going to be 4 you can just subtract the x coordinates to figure that out so since that's 4 we're going to multiply this by 0.5 since we calculated the distance we're going to multiply by the scale factor of 0.5 and we get that the new distance is going to be 2 so we're going to calculate that same horizontal distance from 6 comma 3 and that new point will be 4 comma 3 since it's going to be halfway, half the distance horizontally from 6, 3 in the left direction, as 2, 3 is. And for our final point, for point B, we're going to see that point B from 6, 3 is going to be two units vertically um, up. So the coordinates are from 6, 5 to 6, 3. Or I apologize, from 6, 5 to, yes, 6, 3. And the distance between those figures, uh, those two points, is 2 on a vertical distance. And we're going to multiply 2 times 0.5 to get 1 is our, uh, uh, our new vertical distance. And we're going to calculate the vertical distance of 1 from 6, 3. And we get that our new final, final new point is going to be 6, 4, since it's 1 up from 3. And we can simply just draw this figure here. And we can label it as as A prime, C prime, B prime. All right, guys, so that's it for today's video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I had a pleasure making this video. This has been eCore Academy, our e-learning platform today. Please make sure to like and subscribe. You can also feel free to visit our website at www.ecoreacademy.org. I strongly recommend it as we give full unlocked access to all of our course videos here represented here on YouTube, as well as integrated quizzes, note sheets and worksheets that go along with each and every single one of our videos. We have organized sections and uh, we have organized course studies as well for you all. Um, and we also have listed events, so say for example, we're having live streams, things like that. We'll all have our information posted on our website there. So I encourage you to please make an account there as it is entirely free. You can also feel free to email us at ecoreacademy at gmail.com if you have any questions or if you just want to reach out. And please feel free to visit all of our socials down in the description box below with all of their links. And that includes our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages. Uh, you can visit our uh, social media pages just to see what we have posted there, all of our content there. And please help us um, by uh, sharing all of our content and see if you can help someone else as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, please make sure to like and subscribe and hit that post notification bell down below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, this has been AJ, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.